Hello everyone, this is third part of neonatal resuscitation. I have already covered the principal changes in first video and initial steps in second video. Today I am going to tell you positive pressure ventilation, how to give and how to intubate endotracheal tube intubation and how to insert the laryngeal mass airway. So today you will know how to give breathing to the newborn if it is required. So step B. This is the NR algorithm. I have already explained this part in first two videos that before birth antenatal counseling team briefing and equipment should be checked. After birth we should assess charm, tone and crying or breathing. If answer to this is yes then routine newborn care. If answer to any one of this is no then we have to start the initial steps of resuscitation. Then after initial steps of resuscitation we should again evaluate the baby by heart rate, respiratory rate, SpO2 and cardiac monitoring. Then if you find that baby is having labored breathing or persistent cyanosis. In this case for persistent cyanosis we have to start the free flow oxygen after positioning and clearing the airway and we should monitor the baby by continuous SpO2 cardiac monitoring and heart rate and respiratory rate. If baby is having labored breathing as we see in the preterms newborn we should consider the continuous positive airway pressure. So now in this video you can see the preterm newborn. Baby is having the breathing. Heart rate is also more than 100 beat per minute. Airway is also clear. Baby is positioned but the respiration are labored. You can see the retractions. You can see the baby is having tachypnea. In this case, what will be the next step after the initial steps of resuscitation? Answer is continuous positive airway pressure. After initial steps of resuscitation, if the baby is breathing, heart rate is also at least 100 beat per minute. But the baby is cyanotic, persistently cyanotic. As you can see in this image, cyanosed periphery and also having the cyanos lips. In this case, we should provide the supplemental oxygen. We should monitor by the SpO2. If cyanosis persists even after supplemental oxygen, we can provide the positive pressure ventilation. If also having respiratory distress with persistent cyanosis, then we can consider the CPAP. So what are the ways to provide the supplemental oxygen? We can provide the free flow oxygen by the oxygen mask, flow inflating bag, TP resuscitator or oxygen tubing which we can hold close to the baby nose. CPAP can be provided with the flow inflating bag or TP resuscitator or by the CPAP machine. We should not give the free flow oxygen by the Ambu bag. We should not use the Ambu bag or self inflating bag for the free flow oxygen. We should remember this because in this oxygen only delivered when we will squeeze the bag. This will not provide the free flow oxygen. This is the wrong way. Now after providing the supplemental oxygen, we should start with the room air then increase to maintain the target SpO2. So according to the time of birth, this is the target preductal SpO2. So at 1 minute of life, 60 to 65 in right hand. At 2 minutes, 65 to 70%. 3 minutes, 70 to 75%. 4 minutes, 75 to 80%. So at 5 minutes of the age, SpO2 will be 80 to 85 percent and at 10 minutes, 85 to 95 percent. MCQ on the target preductal SpO2 can be asked in this form. At what time after birth, oxygen saturation should be 85 to 95 percent? 
so the answer is 10 minutes of age for this mcq now we should know the blender flow meter and flow dialer this is the flow meter where we can set the flow rate and this is the air oxygen blender where we can set the FiO2. So in the blended case, we should adjust to the desired concentration and flow rate should be directed through the tubing to the oxygen delivery device. We can set the flow rate in flow meter between 0 to 20 liter of per minute here. For free flow supplemental oxygen, we should adjust the flow meter to 10 liter per minute. So flow rate for free flow oxygen should be set at the 10 liter per minute. Even for positive pressure ventilation, we have to start with the 21% oxygen. Then if we are increasing, then we have to set the flow rate. We should begin the free flow oxygen supplementation with the 21 to 30% oxygen. So in the blender, we should set the FiO to 21% and then slowly we have to increase to achieve the oxygen saturation target. So at what flow rate of the oxygen you will start the positive pressure ventilation? Answer is 10 liter per minute. After the initial step when you are evaluating the baby you find that baby is having apnea or gasping respiration or heart rate less than 100 beat per minute. Then start the positive pressure ventilation with continuous monitoring by pulse oximeter and cardiac monitor. So after the initial step positive pressure ventilation is indicated if the baby is having either apnea or gasping or heart rate less than 100. So what will we do in case of apnea, gasping or heart rate less than 100 beat per minute? We have to provide the positive pressure ventilation with the SpO2 monitoring and with the cardiac monitoring. In newborn resuscitation, ventilation of the lung is the single most and most effective step. With these three indications, another indication to provide the positive pressure ventilation is if the SpO2 remain below target value despite giving the free flow supplemental oxygen up to 100%. In this case also, we should provide the positive pressure ventilation. What are the devices we can use for the positive pressure ventilation? So we can use the self-inflating bag, Ambu bag, we can also use the flow inflating bag or TP resuscitator. Main advantage of the Ambu bag is that we do not require any compressed gas source for the resuscitation with the Ambu bag. While for the flow inflating bag and TP resuscitator, compressed gas source is required. We can set the PIP manually in the TP resuscitator while by adjusting the flow wall, we can also provide the PIP in flow inflating bag. While in the Abmu bag, we can provide the PIP according to how hard, how long we are pressing the bag. If we are pressing the bag with one finger, that means we are only delivering the almost 20 centimeter of water. If we are using the two fingers, that means 30. If we are using the three fingers, that means 40. So here in this image, now you can see it is assembled with the oxygen source and reservoir. So by this way, we can provide the more than 95% oxygen. If we are willing to give that with 21% oxygen, if the newborn is more than 35 week gestation age and we are starting the positive pressure ventilation we should ideally start with the 21 percent then don't connect the oxygen source and don't connect the reservoir so ambu will deliver the 21 percent if we are connecting the oxygen source then 40 percent if we are connecting reservoir also then more than 95 percent we can set the fio2 in tp resuscitator so the basic difference between these three devices self inflating bag as i said does not require any compressed gas source 
while both flow inflating bag and tp resuscitator requires compressed gas source it functions even without a proper seal while these two does not work without proper seal pip can be created according to how hard how long the bag is squeezed while in the flow inflating bag flow of incoming gas and also depends on how hard and how long the bag is squeezed we can set manually peep only if additional wall we will attach to the self inflating bag otherwise peep cannot be delivered it can be given by adjusting the flow control wall and in this we can set manually here free flow oxygen cannot be delivered as i said in the few slides that we have to give, start the free flow oxygen with either oxygen mask or we can give the free flow oxygen by the flow inflating bag we can also give free flow oxygen by the tps but we cannot give with the self inflating bag and we cannot give even the cpap continuous positive airway pressure while this can be given by the flow inflating or tps resuscitator safety feature pop of wall pressure goes is present whenever pressure is more than 40 cm of water pip pop of wall will be elevated and extra pressure will be released here also pressure goes and in this maximum pressure relief wall and pressure goes is present so for the positive pressure ventilation we have to set the pip if we are using the tp as a resuscitator and in case of resuscitation bag it will depend on how hard how long you are pressing so we should start the positive pressure ventilation with the pip of 20 to 25 cm of water but in full term babies initially higher inflation pressure of 30 to 40 cm of water may be required for first few breathes then after initial inflation then we can decrease the inflation pressure up to 20 to 25 so in mcq it can be asked begin positive pressure ventilation with the inflation pressure of 20 to 25 cm of water how much peep we have to set in initial settings peep should be 5 cm of water when we are administrating the peep with the initial inflating breathes it will helps to achieve the stable lung inflation more quickly it will also help in removing the fluids in the alveoli it will prevent the air space from collapsing during exhalation so when we are providing the cpap when we are keeping the preterms baby on cpap prophylactically this peep helps in prevention of collapse of the alveoli how much breath rate or how much frequency of ventilation will be there we have to set between 40 to 60 per minute now i am showing you the parts of ambu bag or self inflating bag this is patient outlet now see the fish mouth valve this is one way valve these are the exhalation ports now i am attaching the mask we should keep the finger over the hole when we are attaching and then press so mask is tightly attached this is pressure release valve or pop up valve now we have to check the bag so here you can uh, listen swish sound so bag is properly working no leak is there these are the bag refill valves this is air inlet and now i am attaching the reservoir to the air inlet this is oxygen inlet now i am attaching the oxygen tubing to the oxygen inlet so this is the assembled ambu how much oxygen percentage delivered by the ambu when we are not connecting reservoir and oxygen then 21% if we are connecting only oxygen 
oxygen tubings are connected to the oxygen inlet and flow rate 10 liter per minute then 40 percent if we are connecting both reservoir and oxygen tubing at the rate of 10 liter per minute then 90 to 100 percent more than 95 percent now about the mask we should choose the proper size of mask so in this image you can see this is the correct size of the mask because it covering the nose and mouth not covering the eyes not receding the chin while this is the incorrect too large mask and this is also incorrect because too small not even covering the nose and mouth we should make the airtight seal between the rim of the mask and the face so to achieve the pressure that will inflate the lungs Ventilation cannot be successful if there is a large air leak. So whenever we are giving the positive pressure ventilation with the big end mass, we should make sure there should not be air leak. So in this image you can see this is C clip by the thumb and index finger. I have kept the index finger and thumb over the rim of the mask and making the tight seal. The rest of the fingers are over the chin and neck. So this is E clip. This is also asked in the viva. What is C clip? What is E clip? So to make the tight seal and to give the thirst, we have to make this clip. We should suction and position the baby in sniffing dog position. Cup the chin in the mask and then cover the nose. First, we have to keep the mask in such a way that this should not reset the chin. This should cover the chin, mouth and nose light pressure on the mask to create the seal and anterior pressure on the posterior rim of mandible should be given now about the frequency of ventilation we should deliver the 40 to 60 breath per minute and this is the rhythm we should follow throughout the giving the big and mass ventilation so breathe two three breathe two three so when we are saying breathe at that time we should squeeze the back when we are saying 2-3, at that time we should release the bag. Always we should start with the 21% oxygen in full terms baby, more than 35 weeks gestation age babies and higher percentage 21 to 30% will be required in preterms baby. This is the initial FiO2 when we are giving the resuscitation. If baby is not responding, we are not... Uh, getting the target saturation then we can increase the FiO2 and initial pressure should be 20 mm of water but in full terms baby initially higher pressure up to 30 to 40 for some initial breeze may be required how many breeze will be delivered in the minutes during the positive pressure ventilation so we can deliver 40 to 60 breeze per minute ventilation of the term newborns begin with so answer is 21 percent initiate the resuscitation of the preterms baby less than 35 weeks with 21 to 30 percent oxygen now in this video you can see how to give the big and mass ventilations first attach the proper size of the mask here in this video you can see then make the c clip by keeping your index finger and thumb over the rim of the mask then uh, cover the chin nose and oral cavity so this is c clip and here you can see the e clip and then follow the rhythm squeeze two three squeeze two three and deliver the 40 to 60 breaths in one minute to ensure the effective positive pressure ventilation after 30 seconds of administrating the positive pressure ventilation we should check the signs of improvement by heart rate respiratory rate spo2 and cardiac monitor most important sign is the rising of heart rate improvement in the saturation will be there spontaneous breathing will be started and adequate and equal breath sound will be there and good chest rise will be there with improvement newborn should become pink and muscle tone should also improve when heart rate is stabilized more than 100 beat per minute then we can reduce the rate and pressure of assistant ventilation until effective spontaneous respiration as a start in when color improves supplemental oxygen can also be weaned as tolerated so now in this algorithm after giving the positive pressure ventilation for the 30 second 
during evaluation if you find heart rate is less than 100 beat per minute then you should ensure the adequate ventilation by mr sopa ventilatory corrective step consider the endotracheal intubation or laryngeal mask airway and monitor the baby again after 30 seconds so according to these parameter if you find heart rate is less than 100 beat per minute then go for ventilation corrective step mr sopa so m4 mask adjustment it so you should ensure the good seal of the mask on the face r reposition the airway sniffing dog position suction the mouth and nose if secretions are there o4 open the mouth ventilate with the baby mouth slightly open lift the jaw forward increase the pressure gradually increase the pressure after every few breaths alternative airway consider the et or lma so now in this video you can see i am performing mr sopa m4 mask adjustment now r4 reposition the airway sniffing dog position now s s4 suction the mouth and nose so by suction catheter and pressure should be between 80 to 100 now open the mouth by giving the anterior jaw thrust increase the pressure so for increasing the pressure you have to squeeze the back how long how hard you are squeezing will deliver the peep so two or three finger should be used to squeeze the back and alternative airway either endotracheal intubation or laryngeal mask airway when positive pressure ventilation continue for more than several minutes always insert the nasogastric feeding tube and suction the gastric content and leave the end to be open so how to measure the length of nasogastric feeding tube from tip of the nose to the tragus and from tragus to the halfway between gyphoid process and umbilicus so this is the way to measure the length of nasogastric feeding tube to insert the orogastric tube or nasogastric feeding tube how will you measure the distance from bridge of the nose to the ear lobe from ear lobe to the point halfway between gyphoid process and umbilicus so this is also asked in the viva indication of endotracheal intubation are if heart rate less than 100 in spite of positive pressure ventilation at any time if heart rate is less than 60 no adequate chest rise no clinical improvement if chest compression are needed when heart rate is less than 60 then intubation provide the better coordination and efficacy of ppv and when you are supposed to give the drugs adrenaline then intubation should be done in some special condition we should consider the intubation early in extremely premature baby because we have to give the surfactant also for surfactant administration and when congenital diaphragmatic hernia you are suspecting because ambu bag is contraindicated what are the equipments will be required for the intubation we need the laryngoscope with extra bulbs a straight blade of all sizes et of various sizes so what are the various size of the laryngoscope blades we will need during NR for extremely premature baby or less than 1 kg double zero size of the blade should be there if preterm 1 to 2 kg then zero size if full term more than 2 kg then one size of the blade will be required now what are the size of the endotracheal tube will be needed below 1 kg or below 28 gestation age 2.5 internal diameter ET tube 1 to 2 kg or 28 to 34 week gestation age 3 mm size between 2 to 3 kg or 34 to 38 week gestation 3.5 size more than 3 kg more than 38 week 3.5 or 4 mm size of the ET 
so in the form of uh, mcq or in viva for babies weighing less than 1 kg what will be the recommended et size 2.5 mm the preferred laryngoscope blade for term baby 1 so the image showing the how to hold the laryngoscope and how to introduce in the oral cavity we should hold laryngoscope in left hand in by the handle and the tip of the blade toward the chin and in this image you can see when you will introduce the blade in mouth you will lift the tongue then you will see the vellicula and epiglottis will be visible then when you will lift the epiglottis vocal cords will be visible in the shape of v and then you have to introduce endotracheal tube and vocal cord guides should be at the level of vocal cord now in this video you can see the procedure of intubation in left hand laryngoscope and in right hand et so always we should hold the laryngoscope in left hand then we have to insert the blade into the right side of the baby mouth advance the blade until the tip lies just beyond the base of the tongue in vellicula then lift the laryngoscope in the direction that handle is pointed do not rotate or rope the laryngoscope handle then you have to identify the inverted v shape vocal cord hold the et in your right hand and insert into the right side of baby's mouth advance the tube until the vocal cord are positioned at the vocal cord guideline so in this video you can see how to intubate so first position the baby in sniffing door hold the laryngoscope in left hand and insert and then see the structure lift the tongue then see the vellicula now i am giving the cricoid pressure if vocal cords are not visible then give the cricoid pressure then insert the et by holding in right hand then once you have inserted the et properly then against the upper lips you should hold the et and then give the tube in bag ventilation so i am connecting the ambu bag to the connector and giving the breath breath 2 3 breath 2 3 so this is the way to insert the endotracheal tube in this image you can see this is the right way to lift the blade lift the blade in axis parallel to the handle so this is the axis of handle we should lift our blade to this side only do not rock or do not tilt the blade so if you will tilt the blade then vision will be obstructed this is the vocal cord guide you can see in this image and this is black mark is a vocal cord guide we should be at the level of vocal cord now how to give cricoid pressure here in this image you can see by the help of little finger we can give the cricoid pressure or we can take the help of another person if vocal cords are not visible here in this image you can see this is the base of the tongue and once you will go beyond you will lift the epiglottis then v shape vocal cords will be visible this is epiglottis now how much depth of et tube should be inserted so the depth of et tube should be weight plus 6 so if the 1 kg weight baby then 7 cm 2 kg then 8 cm 3 kg then 9 cm or just you have to multiply the et size with 3 so if you have you have choose the 3 mm size et then 3 into 3 9 cm or there is a rule of 7 for less than 1 2 and 3 kg et tube 7 8 9 cm should be inserted respectively generally remember the weight plus 6 it is the easiest way to remember how much depth you have to insert
this is table again showing how much depth we have to insert for less than 750 6 for 1 7 for 2 8 for 3 9 and for 4 kg 10 centimeter now you can see how to fix the ET we should cut the adhesive into two parts just leave the one centimeter this time when you are removing the laryngoscope fix the ET against the upper lip by holding it against the upper lip a stamp should be at the corner of mouth around the ET and one part should be attached over the lip and another part should be around the endotracheal tube so this is the way to fix the endotracheal tube how to confirm the position of ET ET is passed in the trachea or in the esophagus first is when you have inserted the ET you have washed that tube passing between the coats also see the chest movements are there or not listen for the brace sound in axilla and in stomach if brace sound is audible only in axilla not in stomach that means you have inserted rightly in trachea if brace sounds are not audible in the axilla only in the stomach that means you have wrongly inserted in esophagus if improvement in heart rate and SpO2 after giving the tube and vague ventilation, that means ET is properly inserted in the trachea. Also, vapor condensing inside the tube. When baby will exhale, CO2 will be condensed, so it will be visible. If you are having the calorimeter or capnography, then you can also confirm the position of ET. So, in this image, you can see the calorimeter. This is the purple color. Once the baby will exhale, this will be converted into the yellow color. So two most important indicator that the ET has been inserted in the trachea is first is excel CO2 which is detected by either calorimeter or capnography and second is rapidly increasing heart rate clinical sign which suggests that ET is properly inserted. If the baby's condition worsen after the intubation, what can be the possible causes? Displaced ET, obstructed ET, pneumothorax or equipment failure. You have inserted rightly, you have started the tube and bag ventilation, but suddenly baby has deteriorated. Then you should remember either displaced, obstructed, pneumothorax or equipment failure. Dope is the trick to remember these four points. Ideally, intubation should be done within 20 seconds. If you are not able to insert the ET within 20 seconds, then you can either give the Began mask or you can try the laryngeal mask airway. So first prepare for the insertion, then insert the LMA into the baby's mouth. Advance the device till you feel the resistance following the contour of mouth. Once you have inserted, then start the positive pressure ventilation and confirm the placement. So in this video you can see how to insert the LMA. So this is the mask. First we should deflate it. How will you deflate it? Attach the syringe over here and remove the air. So I have deflated the laryngeal mask. So now it is deflated. Now insert. Remember the open part should be toward the chin and close part toward the nose and insert in this way in the contour of the mouth and insert till you feel the resistance and once you have inserted again inflate the rim of the mask then attach the ambu bag and give the breathing breathe two three breathe two three so Today I have explained the step B. In previous video I have already explained the step A. In next video I will explain the C and D step. So any query about this topic? Hopefully no queries. Thank you so much.